Good morning and welcome. My name is Dennis Walker. I'm the sales manager at Integra One. And today we're going to talk about why manage services. And we are going to try to keep this to the 30 minutes that we said, because I believe most of the people on this call went, I can do 30 minutes. I can't do an hour. So we're going to do our best here. Let's take a look at the agenda for today. So first off, I'm just going to give a high level on, on Integra One. So some of you might be familiar with us, with us. some of you might not be. Uh, then we're going to get into what to look for in a managed service provider, literally questions that you should ask if you're vetting out an MSP. Then we're going to dispel, dispel some myths, like Mythbusters. Uh, and we had a few questions sent to us prior to this webinar that we're going to address. And then we will open it up to questions that you have. And just a note about that in the chat section, because we can't unmute you in the chat section as we talk here. If you have a question, just please type it in there and we will address it at the end of this webinar. So Integra One. We don't sell boxes, we sell solutions. Let me clarify that. We do indeed sell boxes. So if you want to buy a box, we can sell it to you, we can talk to you about that. But our differentiator is really in our engineering team and the solutions that we put together for you. So with an engineering team of over 50 full-time certified engineers, every discipline that you see here on the right hand side of the screen we have a team that works in that discipline our skills run wide and deep and we don't cross pollinate and by that what i mean is our security team doesn't dabble in data center and our data center guys don't get involved in technical repair technical service repairs so everybody stays in their lane and they're experts in the lane that they're in. We've been around for 32 years. So I always say with that, look, if you've been around 32 years in this industry, an industry that can chew you up and spit you out, you must be doing something right. So we're proud of those 32 years in business. Over that time, we have expanded to five offices across Pennsylvania. And from an industry standpoint, I would argue there's probably not an industry we haven't been in. There might be, but I would argue that we've been in most of them. So you can feel comfortable reaching out to Integra One and know that we have some experience with what you do. Quick mention of an event that we have every year, last year excluded, uh, OneCon. Fantastic event. It's the end of October, the 19th and 20th. It's in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. It's an opportunity for all of our customers, potential customers, to come out, meet with the manufacturers on site, attend industry relevant breakout sessions. If you're interested in learning more about it, want to sign up and register, you can go to our website at integraone.com. You can talk to the account manager who got you on this call today but it's a great event has received tremendous reviews over the years and we're excited to be looking at and hoping to be doing it again this year on this call today with me is joe consul magno so joe is the head of our managed service operation joe's been with us for five and a half years but he's been in the managed service space for over 10 years so you couldn't have a better resource to talk to. Joe has seen it all. He knows this industry inside and out. So if you have questions when this is over, you want to talk to somebody, Joe is a great person to, to reach out to, and he will be participating more in, in this webinar as we go forward. So let's talk about things to look for when you're vetting a managed service company. And I think it's important that you you look at this as almost like you're interviewing you guys you hire an engineer you're interviewing them you want to learn about them this is you're doing the same thing here in the managed service space so first and foremost location this is probably obvious right why location is important 
you want a provider that is in your area. They're close to you because should something go sideways in your environment, you need an engineer to come on site. You want them to be able to get someone there in a timely manner. So having a local provider is important. Size. This is really more, uh, well, you want an MSP that works with companies and businesses that are your size. So small MSPs can struggle juggling multiple clients and large MSPs might not provide you with the customer service that you require, right? I mean, it's important. We've had these discussions with people already uh, who were not getting the service they wanted to or the smaller companies couldn't, didn't have the expertise in house. So ask them, what is the size of your client base? Expertise. The in-house engineering expertise should match what your environment looks like. It might not be 100%, right? That would be tough to do, but 75%, they should understand what's in your environment and they should know how to support, troubleshoot, and help you grow that environment. Longevity. So years of experience is critical. You want an MSP who's been around the block and doesn't get surprised by the unexpected. If you have ever had a contractor come to your house to do work, and the first thing they say to you when they walk in is, oh, I've never seen this before, right? This is brand new. You kind of, you kind of look at them like, well, what? Where are we going with this, right? So somebody who has seen it and done it isn't going to give you that experience. They're gonna be calm and they're gonna say, yeah, no problem. We've done this before, I've seen this and they'll be able to address your problem. You feel good. And then lastly, access. And this one always surprises me. Um, the managed service provider should be able to, to give you the access to the tools that they use to monitor your environment. You should be able to log in and see exactly what they're doing or what they said they're going to do, right? There should be no surprises. And I can tell you, I'll give you an example here too. Uh, we had a customer who, who came on board who was paying another managed service provider to patch and keep their servers up to date and they found out that 18 months in, that provider had patched nothing for 18 months. And in today's environment, we all know, look, if you don't patch this stuff, you're leaving yourself vulnerable to attacks. So you should be able to log in and see what's happening. So those are kind of the five things that, that I would absolutely ask anyone I was vetting out from a managed service perspective. Now we're going to jump into five common myths, and I'm going to bring Joe in for this one. And let's start with the first myth. So, Joe, an internal person would be more familiar with our network and systems. So why we believe this is a myth is um, when you have a good managed service provider, one of the things they're going to do is have an onboarding process. So maybe it's 30 days, 60 days, whatever the case may be. And during that onboarding process, they're going to identify key systems, key applications, how users work, et cetera, so that when they go live supporting your environment, it is a good experience. One of the things that we have invested into, and, and I'm sure other managed service providers have as well, is having a document management system. That way, every experience is the same or should be relatively the same when they go to troubleshoot your environment because during that onboarding process you're going to document processes so if x happens we're going to do y uh, etc and then you put that into a system where when you place a call on a tuesday at 8 30 a.m and you get you know todd um he has the same documentation available to him that when you place a call next week and you get charles or somebody they they're all working off the same pieces so being able to establish that, have a successful onboarding process, and having the experience and documentation the same for each one of your uh, phone calls from whatever user it may be, maybe they're on the road, maybe they're in the office, um, and making that available to, to the engineers is what's successful 
from any service provider. So it's important to find out how do you guys document my environment? Where does it go? Does everyone have access to it? So there's no learning curve for there again, someone, an engineer coming out or jumping on the phone and saying, I, I don't know what's happening here. Like if you have to talk to your cable provider. <laughs> okay. so. Yeah, yep. As long, if 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 the resources that are there to manage your your infrastructure, manage your help desk, manage the help desk for you for your business, if they have the same documentation in front of them and they follow the same steps, um, and then that that documentation is continually evolving as things change. Maybe um, when it when it changed from Windows Seven to Windows Ten, or now it's going to be Ten to Eleven, um, and the screens start to look different, then they have to go back. And they have to take new screenshots in order for that experience to be relatively the same. Um, so that that's taking that knowledge and moving it to a provider. They should be be drawing that stuff out and making sure that that they're successful in their deployment of of managed services, help desk, server support, whatever the case may be on your environment. Myth dispelled. <laughs> so if something goes wrong, our workers will be unproductive until you have time to resolve it. And you will prioritize clients who pay more over us. So one of the things when you are out searching for a managed service provider or looking to outsource your IT, uh, one of the key questions you want to ask is what is your SLA? And the SLA stands for service level agreement. And what key indicators of, of a successful MSP are how often are you going to answer the phone within you know, 90 seconds, 60 seconds? 90 seconds is generally what the what the um, the averages um, for how quickly you pick up the phone. So we're going to call this number, and who's responsible for picking that up? Are we going to get level one, level two, et cetera? So how we structure it is we all of our help desk engineers, they they have to pick up the phone within 90 seconds, um, or they're you know they, they missed their SOA, and then we check that on a routine basis, you know, multiple times throughout the day, um, and then we also look take that look, take a look at that over weeks and months to see if we need to add staff, et cetera. Um, so your provider should be providing those details to you. So when you when you begin to search for managed service providers, you can ask, you know, if you're looking at five of them, six of them, how quickly do you get back to emails and how quickly do you get phone calls, um, back to phone calls, and what is your after hours approach? Maybe they're 24 seven, maybe they're business hours, but you need to know what that experience is gonna be like. Um, and maybe different people give you different answers, uh, but, what we do also is we have a separate number available to our managed services customers that's different than our professional services customers. So when they call in, we can identify managed services customers and they get priority in the queue because they've outsourced their IT to us, because they're paying us a monthly basis and, they're, and their reliance or relationship there is much stronger than someone that just calls every 90 days when they have a problem. So those are the things you wanna identify when you're out searching for providers to make sure that this is not uh, a fact and it is a myth um, because if you have an IT provider I'm sorry if you have an IT person you know where they sit you can walk over to them or maybe in, in 2020 2021 you're more more likely to call their uh, cell phone than you are to walk over to them but nonetheless when you when you have that experience internally you want to replicate that externally um, in an outsourced model and identifying those SLAs and what they're going to commit to you um, is is going to make sure you're successful in this Cool. So it's SLA based. It is not, you know, contract based. How much you're spending? You got to meet. We have no. to meet the, the person right. has to meet. Right. Because if you if you have one phone number to call, it's very hard to identify. You know, I guess it might pop up and say this is client X, but um, if somebody doesn't pick up the phone, phone call, it's going to mark against their SLA overall for the day, and that's a stat you're looking for. Great. We don't want to lose control over the workings of our company. We're worried this will disrupt continuity in our internal processes. So this is um, a double-edged sword because if you keep things if you, if you keep things working with um, somebody on site and you have an IT person and you just dump all your knowledge over to them, what happens ultimately when they need to retire or if they put their two weeks in and they move on? So if you have that, that if you build up this person and they're there for 15, 20 years, um, you know, how long are they going to be with you? I mean, it might be a great relationship, but we, we've seen over the course of this summer, more people leave their jobs um, 
for some of our higher ed customers than ever before. Um, and that sets the, the, you know, maybe the college back or it could set the business back because now you have to go hire somebody. Now you have to make sure you're all, all of the worries that you didn't have for years um, suddenly creep up. Well, how do we order hardware? Uh, um, what do we look for when we order hardware? Um, you know, whatever the case may be, you're, you're now scrambling. Whereas if you begin to think of, hey, I want to have our IT guy here, but I want to give a little bit to, to another provider. Um, that way I have a plan if, if they decide they want to move on or, or whatever the case may be. So if you go back to my the, the first myth where we onboarded a customer and we created all the documentation, we knew how to support them successfully, well, you'll begin to get that. So the discussion should be with, a, with if you have an IT person, hey, we're looking for backup for you. Or we're looking for you to begin to focus on other things and let's let these mundane you know, help desk calls, let's let the patching happen with Integra because that allows us a scale. It takes things off your plate and it allows for continuity here. So A, you can take a vacation or, or, or B, you don't have to, you know, if you need to take it, take a morning off to, to go take your kid to school, whatever the case may be, and somebody's you know, buzzing at 8.15 because they can't work, well, they can call Integra and let them deal with it. So I don't necessarily think you're losing control over it, you're actually expanding upon your coverage if you begin to, to go down a model of let's outsource some of what our IT is on, on site. Thanks, it's good. We won't be able to build a good relationship with an external engineer. So why we think this is a myth is because if you're working, if you're, if you're um, when you're out searching for a managed service provider, you should be looking for a cultural fit as well as what they're, what they're gonna provide you because there's, there's tons of IT companies out there that offer very similar packages. Um, it's a very, it's a very you know, large market um, where providers are coming in saying, hey, we can, we can do this. But when you're meeting with managed service providers and you, and you feel like you have a good relationship there, you can probably figure that's taking its, taking its going down paths to the, to the engineers that they're hiring. So to give you an idea, when we hire staff, we, we, of course, we look at what they're capable of on a resume. But the other thing is, is it a cultural fit? Because if it's a cultural fit, then our, our customers have been working with us. They've been working with us in the Allentown office, Pittsburgh office for over a decade. We know what to expect from our customers. And, and when I say a decade, I don't mean just Integra uh, as a managed service provider. We know what, the, what, what they expect from us and, and they know what they they know what they're going to get from us as well. So when we interview people, I want to make sure that they can hop into eight different environments in one day. Because think about it, you have a nine-hour day, one-hour break. You're probably going to work on eight tickets in one day, or maybe six, maybe nine. Who, who knows? But you're going to you're going to be talking to eight different people in a day. And can we keep that consistent? Can we keep that up? Can we keep can we keep that vibrant um, discussion happening? Um, and that's that's what we're positioning ourselves to when we go and get grab engineers off the street and, and begin to grow our business, because you do have engineers that just kind of want to sit back and and, and sit a, at a business and you know maybe maybe hide in the corner and such. That's not what we're looking for when we hire people for our help desk because we tell them you're going to have multiple people calling you in one day. As soon as you're done with one ticket, you're going to be working on the next. But the idea there is you're going to see a ton of different environments. You're going to have a great foundation. And you can move out, move throughout Integra One. So we try to promote from within. And when we set that culture, that culture gets gets spread to our clients. So um, you know, having a great relationship with a, with an engineer is is something that we pride ourselves on. And multiple times, you know, throughout a week, I'll hear from one of our engineers. I spoke to X at this company again, and um, I don't really have too many times you have one person call in and say, "Hey, I only want to speak to this person." That generally doesn't happen. So what that tells me is over the course of our 15 or so engineers that are on the help desk, those interactions are happening cons good and consistently good. Actually, you know what, Joe, we didn't talk about this before, but I'm going to mention it. Um, service. So does the managed service provider you, you work with or you're thinking about working with, do they interact with your end users to ask, how are we doing? Right? Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about so one of the things that we we assign to each one of our managed services accounts is a virtual CIO. And the idea behind the virtual CIO is that they're meeting with our clients on an every 90-day basis. Um, and they're seeing 
okay, what are your goals? What are, what things do you need to plan for? But also, how do you you know see the service going with with what we're doing? So that's one of the key things that a lot of managed service, services providers have been attributing to accounts over the last say 10 years since 2010 or so is a virtual CIO to sit between the sales team that probably works with you on on getting quotes and such, and then the service team. They're right there in the middle, and that's who we we plan on getting involved in those types of discussions. On top of that, anytime we close out a ticket, one of our customers, every one of our customers gets a survey and they can send, create that survey and, and send it in. And how's your experience on this ticket? And if it's real, um, b between a one and a three, I automatically get notified. And if it's four or five, it just, it sits in there and it's there when we go and look at, you know, how, I, how each account likes us or so. So um, having those two things in place, um, and you know you can ask your provider if they have a virtual CIO or how do they submit feedback, good or bad. Um, if you have those two things in place, you should be on the right track. Awesome, thanks. And this is the uh, this is the last myth. This is it's probably the biggest myth of them all. Um, outsourcing is an all or nothing, and we're not comfortable with all. So. One of the key things that man service providers have been doing over the last 10 years or so is a la carte offerings. So, you know, when this whole thing started, it was kind of all or nothing. And that's that's a stigma that was attached to it because you're either going to have an IT person on site or, or you're not. And it's kind of evolved over the last number of years that bigger clients are looking to outsource a piece of their business. So, for example, we've worked with hospitals in the past and when they lose somebody they'll go hey that guy was our server guy we don't have a server guy we don't know when we're going to get one we haven't even, we didn't anticipate him leaving so what are we going to do so what we've done is created packages where we just manage the servers and the the rest of the company um the, the rest of the client is responsible for networking and help desk um so we'll monitor the servers we'll react to the servers and we'll let you know when a problem is coming up on the servers and you guys responsibilities is, is for networking or help desk or maybe we take on the help desk and somebody at, at the client manages the server the servers so this is becoming more and more common because as IT environments evolve and you continually add in more devices and you continually add in more risk with 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 what's happening with ransomware and such it's tough to be on top of everything so what you can do with providers is generally say, hey, I want to outsource our security to you. It's just too much for us to handle. Or I want to outsource our backup to you. We we struggle with backups because Monday morning, that's not what we're thinking about. But it should be what we're thinking about since, since if we didn't have one since Friday, we would have gone three or four days without one. So yes, I, I encourage people to, if they, if they see a weakness and they do a self-assessment and say, hey, we're just really poor with VMware management, talk to an IT company and say, hey, we want to see what a package looks like for us to manage our three, for you to manage our three hosts here, et cetera. So I brought this other screen up as you were talking, Joe, because this, this kind of breaks down some of the areas that you can consider outsourcing. And I highly encourage, you know, there again, I've had discussions um, with IT managers, you know, IT engineers who said, ah, you know, I think we're okay right now but the more we talk the more they realize that yes you know what i can't get to my projects because i've got our internal clients coming to my office every hour with an issue so then i'm trying to fix that issue and i can't get over the more we talked about it they, they realize there are areas where it would be helpful if we just outsource that portion right nobody's we're not getting rid of employees or any we're just taking some of the mundane maintenance and outsourcing that so we can do what we need to do that is where managed service really is today that's what it's about um and hopefully we're going to get to the questions right now hopefully what we just showed you is helpful and you realize that this is an interview process for a managed service. There are things that you definitely, the boxes you want to check to make sure that they're meeting your needs and they will meet your needs as you go further into the process. So with that said, um, Q&A. So I'm going to, Catherine Fernari, who is our director of marketing, is, is actually on the call. 
and she has the questions that were submitted prior to the webinar. Catherine, are you with us? Good morning. Yes, we have three questions that were submitted ahead of time. First question is, what is the pricing structure? Is it tiered? So generally, when you work with a provider, um, they will give you a cost per endpoint, per server, per networking device. That way, it allows you to begin to scale up. So let's say you go to them and say, hey, we want you to, guys to manage our help desk. Um, and perhaps our servers so they can say hey we have 50 desktops times x you have four servers times x that way if you go and make an acquisition if you bring on staff five ten people you know what the cost is to increase your management of those of those new employees you know by hiring or acquisition etc so yes yeah, so you should be getting a, a, a cost per device that's falling under management. And then same thing with backup. If you're managing 10 servers for backup, then here's what your cost is per server. And then if you begin to retire servers, consolidate, add servers, you'll be able to predict that. That's what we that's what we see a lot in the uh, in the in the in the industry for this. Um, and then the other piece of it is tiering. Yeah, generally there there is volume discounting applied um, because not all servers are going to be the, the same. A lot of customers will have you know 40 some servers so maybe only you know 30 of them or 20 of them are production um so that's when you get into the volume uh discounting um and if you want to uh have a longer discussion about that um at least from the integral one perspective feel free to reach out to account manager and say hey i have you know, 100 servers and this is what i want you guys to manage and then we can begin to identify those and, and put a cost each one of them The next question is, what is the size of your MSP resource pool? So Integra One has 60 some odd engineers at this point. Um, and we're actively, if you see our website, looking to hire more. So if anybody has any resumes, feel free to, to send them in. But where we sit as far as resources that are available to work on a managed services customer is there is there's nothing there that, that stops the practice managers or such from, from working on um, working on customers' uh, needs. Now with managed services customers, when I identify them or I build a contract, I take into account is, is how how tough is this customer going to be to manage? Is it, do I have that in my general managed services group of you know 15 or so guys, or am I going to need to grab one of the guys from the Cisco practice or the HP practice because they have something that perhaps I don't have that expertise? And I'll factor that in um, and I'll put that in the contract or say, hey, we have, um, you guys have um, it's called 40 Authenticator, and that has to go to a security engineer. And we're going to plan on that happening every 90 days for a review or such. Um, so we'll I'll factor that in, um, and I don't draw we don't draw any line between these is only a managed services customer, so only managed services guys can work on that. That's not the case. So you what you're what you're getting here is about 60 engineers, um, varying skill sets that are available to work on stuff for you at any point. Great. The final question is, can you give more information about managed security? What's included? So what we have as far as our managed security practice is we identify that the, the key things that our customers are coming to, to, to us for is, A, I need to meet a cybersecurity, I'm sorry, a cyber insurance or uh, a compliance need. Um, and generally those are is somebody reviewing these logs and are you retaining your logs for X amount of time? It's generally a year. That way, if something happened last May, you're able to go back and, and, and get those logs. You don't get that from a backup. You need to, I'm sorry, you don't get that from just backup your servers. You need to capture the logs that are happening on your network. So we'll capture the logs for X amount of time and then reviewing the logs, we can put an SLA and say, hey, all logs are monitored, I'm sorry, all logs are reviewed within X amount of time. Um, so Generally, that's that's as real time as every 30 minutes, because what you're what you're looking for when an attack happens, generally that person that is applying that attack to your network, whether it be ransomware or locking up your servers or turning backup software, whatever the case may be, they're on there for probably a couple weeks. So when we're reviewing the logs, we're looking for things that are indicative of an attack. And what's indicative of an attack? Well, maybe at 2 a.m. A domain admin was created and added to AD. Well, that's generally not how the, the, the customer works. That's probably something that, that we need to look into, and we'll look into that within 30 minutes. That's what we tied to the to the SLA on a 
on reviewing logs. So the key thing for a managed security is gathering the logs in order to recreate something that may have happened and how quickly can you review those logs and, th and that's what we provide to our clients. Yes, Joe, that's all the questions we had. Thanks, Catherine. Thanks, Joe. So I'm looking at the chat. I don't think we have any questions that were submitted, which means we nailed it. Uh, um, it's 11.30. We definitely nailed the 30 minutes. want to thank everybody for joining today. Please reach out to your account managers and, you know, happy to schedule calls with Joe or whatever. If you want to talk to us, you have any general questions. Have a, have a fantastic rest of the week and a great weekend. Thanks, everyone.